did you you know you have any kind of uh, physical relationship with him the love the feeling of love that i had was independent you have been accused of wearing some of the pretty wild outfits in the past which one yes. or no or no outfits but did he love you Hello everyone namaste welcome to another episode of lifey talks and our guest tonight is bhagwan osho's lover and manager of the entire rajneesh movement if you have seen wild wild country on netflix you pretty much know who ma anand sheela is so please welcome ma anand sheela Hello ma how are you today Namaskar to Hello. you and your listeners So how are you doing I'm, today? I'm doing very well thank you Okay ma uh, today is mothers day and it's an honor to talk to you but before we start i would like to ask uh, should i call you ma or ma anand sheela call me what you like i'm just sheela Sheila so i'll call you Sheila yes okay okay so Sheila you uh, became an overnight sensation after your appearance on the netflix documentary wild wild country uh, were you entirely satisfied how the show portrayed you were you misrepresented in the series the documentary was one sided and uh, sensationalized uh, did it accurately portray the good work you did at rajneeshpuram let me first tell you yes i don't bother with it yeah because i have not seen the film not yet no i and i probably won't see it mm. because i have lived it yeah and how people interpret my life mm. has no relevance right my life is how i live and how i have lived it yes no one can change it absolutely right and i don't uh, waste my time on thinking about it mm. they have portrayed me as they see me yeah I have lived my life as I wanted to live it. And I lived a wonderful life in love with gorgeous man, yes. one of a kind in the whole universe. Correct. Bhagwan. Yes. Um Sheila Osho was genius. He was an absolute genius. Why was the west attracted to Bhagwan? why were people attracted to him what was the obsession he, with the god man there was no obsession it was recognition of him hmm. people felt him people had not felt other people there are many uh, god men and gurus in india even today correct but bhagwan was original no other one can compete with him no other had the grace and the beauty of him yeah it is normal to be attracted to him and if you're not attracted to him then i would go step further and say then something is wrong with you or your eyes <laughs> right okay but what was what was your obsession with him i had in love with him yeah and love, love is obsession passion is like that and i was passionately in love with him and still am still, still am yes mm mm-hmm. but your your relationship with him was uh, more than a spiritual relationship was it a romantic relationship for me definitely romantic yeah. i mean i don't separate romance from the passion from 
passion of love, you know. It is the same river that flows. It doesn't have any buts or no. It was very clear. But did he love you? Does it matter? I'm talking about my love. Yeah. And other loves or not is not the issue. Issue is how I felt. I fell in love. Yeah. This is a bit uh, awkward question, but um, did you, you know, you have any kind of uh, physical relationship with him? It's not an awkward question. I have a very straight answer for it. No, I did not have physical relationship. That was not the point either of mm -hmm. being together. Yeah. The love, the feeling of love that I had was independent of anyone's uh, judgment or physical or non-physical. It didn't depend on anybody. It simply was there and it is still there. Yeah. You love the man. You still love him. And but but when you left the community, there were many accusations on you. Why did you leave him if you loved him so much? Because of the same love that I felt for him and I was with him. And the responsibilities I carried for him. It is the same love said, it's time to move on. And it wasn't an easy move. Yet. Were you okay with this? Tell, you tell me you're looking at me. Do I look like a woman who felt like a victim? No. It was the right moment to depart. Then I departed. There was a right moment to come to him and I came to him. Yeah. Now, answer about uh, the scandals that you want to ask me. Mm. It is an old story now. Yeah. I have answered so many thousands of times yeah. that for me, it has no value. And one thing I can tell you that scandals is not where one should engage themselves. Scandals are not reality. Scandals are simply perspective of somebody's viewpoint. What, what may be a scandal for you, for me, it would be a waste of time. Y you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So to answer to you, what is truth, what is not truth, how one is going to decide. You will look at it from your point of view. I, I will look at it from my point of view. And others will look at it from their point. From of their point. Yeah. But uh, Sheila, you have been called as the bad girl of Rajneesh movement. Do you agree with that label or do you think it's unfair? I didn't wait for an opinion when I fell in love with Bhagwan. Yeah. I don't wait for an opinion from other followers of Bhagwan. Okay. 
I went to Bhagwan on my own. Nobody asked me to go. Except my father took me there to listen to him. Yes. And I left him on my own. Yes. Nobody told me to leave. So, and bad as I am, it's a big compliment in modern world to be a badass. And I leave that compliment with your interest and many people like uh, you are interested in it to know how did I become a badass. <laughs> yes, you are bold. I admire your courage. <laughs> Absolutely. You were you were a community of like-minded individuals when you um when you were in this community, you shared common goals to make the world a better place. But um, you have been also accused of being a cult leader and uh, brainwashing followers. <laughs> yeah. Everybody needs to wash their brains <laughs> and they need to wash their bodies and their clothes. <laughs> People use words without understanding. I was definitely a person who was given the leadership role. I was definitely carrying the responsibility of work and community and community's well-being definitely responsible for Bhagwan's well-being. That doesn't make you anything else than a leader. Now, talk about cult. What is cult? Cult is a Christian word. Correct. It comes from Christianity, or the churches. What they don't understand and what affects their financial health, they call it cult. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. When Christianity was mm. going all around the world, and crusades, they were killing people. Mm. They were having great wars right. with their cross in the hand and a sword in another hand. Yeah. They didn't want any other religion to exist. Mm. Why? Because Community brings the financial health mm -hmm. throughout the ages. In Buddha's time, the uh, Hindus didn't mm -hmm. want Buddha to become prominent. Okay. They troubled him also. And we were, Ratnishpuram was mm. on a Bible belt of America. Mm -hmm. Majority of the population Christian. Correct, correct. This population did not want other religion to exist. Mm. On top of it, Republic, Republican government Mm. They did not want any new religions or new way of thinking. Okay. What they are doing now, you can see it. So, to just call somebody a cult, brainwashing, what nonsense are we talking about? Think 
before you knew the word do you understand the word yep have some analysis of it and people think that using cult everywhere they become big think of it i say to everybody such judgments show only lack of intelligence such approach to a issue mm. will not bring you to the its value Sorry. and it is amazing uh, lately i've been traveling to india often yeah i met so many lovely people like you yeah and people are so so crown yeah with words what they use correct and the themes words are, words are like fashion they don't last long sometimes they don't suit the body who wears it but one has to be fashionable so one uses it means yes well said absolutely well said yes. <laughs> it it sounds like a code actually right <laughs> and it is not just you are programmed with it we are all programmed with it yeah but i i do want to say this that when we talk of men like the quran who has spoken volumes and volumes of pages or words who understood the word to its roots then we should at least try to use right words correct um shila when we are talking about the teachings of uh, bhagwan uh in your opinion uh, you know as we all know there are many gurus there are many spiritual leaders around and uh, in your opinion what are the key differences and similarities between the teachings of uh, these spiritual leaders like uh, bhagwan and sadguru i mean how can an individual determine um, which teachings and practices are most aligned with their personal values and goals the i don't know sadguru but uh, with luck i know the real guru yeah <laughs> but uh, maybe i am drawing a judgment there but my heart is already sold to him it is so interesting people go to learn it man like bhagwan mm. but they don't leave their opinion and lifestyle behind to move with him at a his pace they will say ah this part attracts me or this part i can comply with or this part i don't like so while they like what they can comply with they will remain with him when there is a difference then they go to another guru i get many people asking me why don't you go to sadguru 
Mm. And I said, what need do I have? I have no need. Oh, but learn meditation. I say, I don't want to learn meditation. I'm happy as I am and with what I have. Yes, but you should see him at least once. Why? Is he a monument? No. Is it a historic event? For me, not. Why? But they cannot answer me. The real why. And I do not compare Bhagwan with anybody else. For me, Bhagwan is one of a kind, just as you are one of a kind, I am one of a kind. Why we compare? If you are happy near Sadhguru, you go to Sadhguru. If you are happy with Bhagwan, you be with Bhagwan. It doesn't matter where you are. If you want to learn, you will learn even from animals. It's so good to, you know, listen to you. I have like my hand folded here, and I'm. Listening. Oh yeah. <laughs> like you know, it's that level of respect that I have for you. Yes, too. Thank you, thank you. But that respect we all have to have for one another. Yeah. Then world will be a better place to live. Yeah. Let's let's talk about some um you know fun thing. You have been accused of wearing some of the pretty wild outfits in the past. Which one? Yes. Or no, or no outfits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And and I want to know which one was your favorite and do you still have it in your closet? No. I have no clothes in my closet from old days. But one used to say, I look beautiful in red. And red was our colors, different reds. Even today, uh, I love red wearing. Today I'm wearing the green. Uh, but uh, it is a grey weather and somehow green attracted me <laughs> because springtime everything is green outside also. Um, I, I don't have uh, nothing of uh, my past mm. with me. Mm. What I have is what I have created for me. Right. Now. And uh, I have a good sense of colors. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But, but which, which, you know, from all those pretty wild outfits, which one was your favorite? They were all uh, okay because uh, I would try to wear it for different occasion and every time it looked new. Yeah, yeah, because I'm not rough on clothes, uh, so they remain new longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now looking back um, on your life, in your life, what would you say has been your biggest accomplishment and your biggest regret? Regret, I have none. Hmm. It, that word doesn't exist in my vocabulary. Yeah. And living life is my biggest achievement. I have learned to live life from three important people in my life Pukwan, Father, and Mother. Mother. And they have taught me how to live life. And I'm grateful 
for to them to have this uh, this feeling of completion that I have. And what we created near Bhagwan, and I say word we, because there were many people like me mm-hmm. without their help and support. Mm-hmm. Project is not possible like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And they all love Bhagwan. We had one thing in common. We all love Bhagwan. And everyone had their own way of expressing love for Bhagwan. So that was a big achievement to remain together mm. and do something creative. What I learned there, I have established after leaving Bhagwan. And that is my care homes here. The care homes I created for love of my father, mother, Radnishpuram, was the creation of love for Bhagwan. And they all are beautiful creations with deep love, deep affection, and hard sweat and blood, hard work. Right. But, you know, at one point of time, you had a lot of power in your hands. I still have it. It's called power of love. Yeah. When you when you met uh, Bhagwan for the first time, when your father told you to listen to him, and you know, the first time when you met him, that was the day you fell in love with him. Like second what time, moment? what was the moment? I mean, this happens like there is a connection in eyes, or it's just love at first sight. What happened? That's exactly happened. What happened then has brought out my inner self after meeting him till now. Mm -hmm. And that tells what happened then. It is how now I live and exist tells the moment that seed was planted in me. It is not in words I can express, but closest I can come to it, where life and death became one. So when death would have come in that moment, I was ready. I wasn't afraid. He made you bold. He brought out my character or my being. Mm. It's more than character. It's it's my, uh, my source. Yeah. If you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Do it again. As it was. Exactly do it again. And bring some more love into it, even more. When you were in prison, the time you spent in prison, um, what did you consider to be the most 
valuable lesson that you learn learned i mean how has it influenced your life since then this one was the most valuable it is people can live life of spirituality when everything is wonderful everybody praising this that and other but how many people can prove bhagwan's teachings were true shila and her imprisonment can prove that they work these teachings are profound there is no match they function i don't have to meditate i don't need to meditate because i believe his teachings and they work you practice his teachings in the prison also i practice his teaching i'm alive he taught me how to live he taught me how acceptance is all and everything to solve difficult moment i accepted my prison and i solved the issue you don't see bitterness on me or feel bitterness on me i don't have any bitterness it was the high point of learning highest point of learning sheila do you believe that uh, marriage is necessary for human happiness i mean or do you think that people can lead fulfilling and meaningful lives without being committed in a relationship well i have to disappoint you you can't go shopping for <laughs> marriage anymore <laughs> it is not the man you are marrying brings happiness it is the clothes you buy and jewelry you get right right no um, in relationships and true relationships you require no bond no bondage i see marriage as a certificate to demand sex on the moment you desire and i think that is disgusting mm-hmm. marriage cripples you marriage takes your independence away mm-hmm. marriage institutionalizes you then you may as well go to any other institute and leave your freedom behind you cannot allow your freedom to be uh tied down like that and today's day and age marriage has become a fiasco when uh two out of two marriages one fails yeah it's a 50% failure rate what will you stabilize then people bring in lot of ideas because of children i have to remain together or the because of parents or because of money marriage is not a relationship marriage is a one point relationship is to secure your sexuality and finances financial security i mean we can delude ourselves saying that yeah we 
we are very much in love. Mm-hmm. But if you are very much in love at the time of marriage, when time comes, you need to be on your own. You will depart. Then you, you then that marriage is relationship. Both parties would understand and allow each other, each other graceful departure. Yeah. Do you think this is the reason these days marriages don't work? Yeah. The reason is people are looking for security, financial security, and sexual desire fulfillment and both cannot bring the substance that you require to be together with somebody requires a lot of acceptance a lot of patience a lot of understanding and we are not taught that we are taught totally from the other side then it cannot work but uh, sheila you have been married thrice mm-hmm. so what and there were all three three wonderful marriages of love <laughs> yeah. yes well my first How was your ex love yeah was good there were ups and downs but we were very clear in honesty we remained together if honesty cannot be exercised you separate my first husband i lived 13 years mm. together he died of cancer mm. i write about it in my autobiography yes uh don't kill him hmm my second husband uh we met each other uh 10 days a month sort of because i was very busy he was very busy my third husband uh when i left pagwan he chose not to come with me hmm. so second husband i was already married 5 years um and we maintained 10 days routine a month for a while then i left pagwan and i go to prison and then he got a new lover and when i came out of prison a uh, year year and a half later he also died and then uh, my third husband i don't know what has happened to him okay um bhagwan i was 14 years with him so my record is pretty good <laughs> <laughs> and so so many years put together in three people divided properly <laughs> yes okay but um when we talk about infidelity what mm? do you have to say talk about i didn't understand the question repeat please um when we talk about infidelity what do you have to say about this what i have to say mm. we all are individuals mm. and we are free people yeah marriage becomes a prison mm. then 
in vitality has to be there. You support in vitality by trying to free yourself from prison called marriage. Yep. And if you allow freedom to one another, you don't have to be in vital. No. Then vitality has no value. Mm. It is like a, a vicious circle. Yeah. And honesty is a big, big event, I call it, that people need to learn in any relationship. And leave jealousy out of your life. You have to give space. Yeah, and why allow yourself to be compared? Mm. I, to me, it is without dignity. Jealousy, I call it a cancer of the soul. Mm. Don't do that to yourselves. It happens in workplaces, it happens in homes, it happens among siblings. No, there is other cancer, other malignancies available on the market, but don't take this one. Jealousy. Mm. Jealousy will sure throw you in depression. It can ruin your life. Mm. It will eat you up inside slowly. And your ego will not allow you to look into face of jealousy and you will lie. If somebody say, Ravya, why? What is wrong with you? Why are you so down? You say, no, no, everything is fine. And nothing is fine. In jealousy, no act is good. Mm. It will carry the stink of jealousy in everything. Give me, give me three strong teachings of Bhagwan. Three strong and powerful teachings from him. Love, lie, acceptance. I give you a fourth one too. And laughter. Hmm. Don't lose your sense of humor. And we have come to end of our session. Before we leave, what message would you like to convey to others, to people who are struggling with their own relationships or seeking to find love and companionship in their lives? Become free. Free is a wonderful four-letter word you should have it in your life, free. Mm. Become free, worship freedom. So thank you again. Thank you, Marshila, for joining us and uh, sharing your insights from your life journey. It was wonderful to learn from you. Thank you, Ravia.